Uh, howdy, thanks for making it towards the end of the day, the first day of WordCamp Boston. Uh, this is my first WordCamp Boston, and it is very lovely up here. I came here from Orlando, and um, apparently there's a severe heat warning this weekend, is what the email told us, and it's lovely outside. <laughs> so, I don't know what all y'all are complaining about. <laughs> Uh, there's, there's not nearly as much humidity as I normally have to deal with. Um, Alright, so my name is Dave Wolfhaw. Uh, I'm going to be talking to you today about the Indie Web. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick spoiler for my talk. You're using WordPress, I assume. Everyone's here using WordPress, right? So you're already a part of it to some extent. So, easy, talk over, you don't have to do anything else. Uh, Um, I have a company in Orlando, Florida called Fix Up Fox. I do website maintenance. And I am here on behalf of SiteGround. Um, anyone doesn't know SiteGround, they're very awesome. I use their hosting all the time, I love it. All of the other hosts here are also awesome. Uh, but since this one is up to WordCamps, they're a little bit more awesome. So, first thing I want to talk about is centralization. Uh, so I want to do two quick show of hands things. Who uses Facebook here? Crunch, I figured I would say about everybody. Who likes Facebook? <laughs> I mean, you all use it, right? You have to like it, right? No? Okay, so um, that's kind of what I want to talk about today. Uh, there are ways that you can use the internet that uh, allow you to do all of the things that you want to do on the internet without having to compromise your values, without having to do as many things that might make you feel icky, I'll say. I'm sure that there are a variety of reasons why you'll say, yes, I use this tool even though I don't actually like it. Um, so I'd like to offer some alternatives. So, uh, oh wait, one last show of hands. Who was at uh, Aaron's talk this morning? because he kind of covered a little bit of uh, what I'm going to cover here in the beginning um, at the web when it was earlier on, originally created, was a lot more open than it is now. So I mentioned Facebook. I'm going to pick on them a bit because they are a humongous target, so uh, you know, it's very easy to punch upward there. Um, so the majority of Americans use Facebook. Um, the majority of people who are on the internet use Facebook. Uh, that number has continued to grow over time. Uh, pretty much every major social network you know, has hundreds of millions, if not billions of users. Honestly, if you're trying to start a social network now and you're not talking about an audience of billions, no investors can be leading you. Facebook has four of the, the four uh, top apps globally. All four of the most popular apps on Android and iOS are owned by one company. So if anyone got upset for any reason over the past few years, there are way too many reasons to name, and decided, I don't want to use Facebook as much. I've heard people say literally this, it's okay, I can just go to Instagram, because I really like going there better anyway, and all my friends are on there. And there's this new thing called Stories, it looks exactly like Snapchat, except for, you know, I don't feel like I'm under 18 years old using it, or something. Um, doesn't really help when one company still owns all the different apps. Facebook originally got a lot of users, uh, as did most social networks, by piggybacking off of the success of networks that came before them. Uh, so here's screenshots of the uh, Facebook contacts upload. If you go to your phone, you can have it, or rather, sorry, by default, it will automatically upload contacts from your phone, unless you toggle that off. Um, and you have, to, you have to actually go in and say, you know, do not take my existing network, from elsewhere, my in-person network, and add it to your network. What Facebook doesn't do, and again, I'm picking on them, but uh, Google is similar, Twitter is similar, uh, most of the large social networks are, is they do not reciprocate. They will allow you to import your list of contacts from your phone or from your Google account, uh, but they won't allow you to export those contacts elsewhere. If you decide, I don't want to be on Facebook anymore. You have to manually go through and find where you can find other people online. There's no export tool specifically for your contacts. 
they have built tools now um, you know, where you can <laughs> export your data, but if anyone has ever used that tool, figure out what you can do with that data once you have it. Um, it's almost like someone decided to build a tool to match the letter of the law, if not the spirit, to give you, you know, HTML pages or literal PDFs uh, where, you know, you can't copy text out of, of the data that you've created there. And also, no ability to correct improper data, uh, delete data if you want to. So, they built a lot of their success on taking other people's networks, but they do not want to enable anyone else to become successful as well. So there are two different types of uh, getting out of decentralization, getting out of centralization um, that we can talk about. Decentralization and distribution. So a centralized network, um, our larger social networks, are going to be like uh, that first model. Everything runs through one hub. That means if there is an issue with that one hub, um, if Facebook goes down, which it's done a few times recently on Instagram, or Cloudflare had an outage recently, uh, it will cause a problem for anybody using that service. Additionally, if you want to extricate yourself from that service, you cannot connect with any of the other nodes on that network. A decentralized model, uh, which is what I'm going to talk about with some of the examples later, is similar in a way that uh, there are still some central nodes, but no one of them is in charge of the entire network. And then finally, a distributed model is uh, what the internet was originally intended to be a bit more. The original idea of the internet was a US military program uh, called the ARPANET, and the idea was how can we ensure that we can make communications uh, if there is something, like let's say a nuclear bomb goes off somewhere, and we have lost some nodes on that network. They can all communicate with each other. So a distributed model allows any of the nodes to connect with one another along chains, no one single point of failure. Uh, who here has heard the term anyway before? Cool. Well, thank you for joining, and thank you all of you who uh, didn't know for uh, having the interest uh, so the IndieWeb, I'm just going to use a definition that you can find on IndieWeb.org. It is a community of individual, personal websites connected by simple standards based on the principles of owning your domain, using it as your primary identity to publish on your own site. You can optionally syndicate elsewhere, and you get to own your data. Um, so again, I gave you a spoiler at the beginning. If this sounds a lot like WordPress, that's partly Um, I'm going to give an example before I get to the WordPress examples. Um, I'm going to, maybe this will be my last hand thing. Has anyone here heard of or used Mastodon? Awesome. Um, let me get your things later so I can add you. <laughs> uh, so Mastodon, uh, this is a Mastodon instance that I run uh, called tech.lgbt. You can go to this website, sign up for an account. If this looks a lot like Twitter or TweetDeck, uh, that's kind of the idea. Uh, Mastodon is run on something called instances. This is a distributed, decentralized network where you can connect with each other socially, uh, but you don't have to be on one network. So on Twitter, uh, you can just, you know, at my name on Twitter, uh, but on Mastodon, I would say, you know, at Frank, at Mastodon.social, if you had an account there. Mine is at David, at tech.lgbt. Um, so you can sign up on one of their thousands of instances now. You can decide to get uh, a little bit crafty and create your own instance. You can take the software and fork it into something new, which a lot of people already have. Um, there is one called dolphin.social, where all uh, updates are converted to the letter E. So like you'll type words and it just converts it to the letter E of whatever length the words are. Um, there is uh, one that an excellent case study was done on recently called Friend Camp that was specifically for an in-person network of about 50 people. Um, the city of Pittsburgh has a very uh, robust Mastodon instance just for people who live there locally. Uh, so people can find different reasons for creating one, but the idea is that these are all decentralized nodes. I have a node, there's about 160 people on mine right now, so they are reliant on my server staying up, but they can easily take all of their data, move to a different node if they so chose, uh, or they can sign up with a different one altogether, but they aren't locked into connecting with people on one. So this is important in that there's a little bit more resilience here. Yes, it 
is on me as one person to maintain a network for, again, right now about 160 people. But I would say that's a little bit better uh, ratio than the 30,000-ish uh, moderators that Facebook has for 2.5 billion people. Even with just me alone, I'm still doing better. Um, there are other things that you can use the software for, and there's other alternatives. An example is someone forked Mastodon to create something called PixelFed, which is, it looks a lot like Instagram, because the idea was to create a social network similar to Instagram, but based on the same decentralized network. And of course, there's WordPress, which is why all of us are here. So, uh, good news, if you want to get involved in creating an indie website, you probably already have one by having it be on WordPress. But I want to talk to you about what this means, why it's important, and what you can do to extend it. So if you go to wordpress.org, on the About page, one of the things that's uh, highlighted you know, right on the software's main page, or main info page, are the four free use of software, of open source software. Um, you can run the program for any purpose, you can study how the program works, you can redistribute it, and you can modify it and distribute it to other people with your applications. Um, so an example is say you're building a WordPress theme or plugin. You can also uh, do the same thing with those. You can send it to other people, they can modify it, they can take your modifications and so That's how it's grown to be more than a third of the web. You know, if it was a closed system, we wouldn't be using it. A lot of people moved from movable type to WordPress in 2000 or so, about a year after WordPress is out, uh, when movable type moved to a closed source license. They were able to take the software and do new things with it. And again, it's able to host a conference of people who are interested uh, in part due to that openness. So, uh, there's a thing for any web called IndieMark. Um, it is basically a score you can use for your site to grade how indie web it is. Um, Aaron Jordan. Uh, has created an IndieMark ca calculator that you can use online. It's a very long, it's a complicated URL, so I'm just going to say type IndieMark calculator, you know, do your search engine of choice and you'll find it. Um, but you can look at your site, it asks you some basic questions, and you can get a score of how good your site fits into this. Um, it works on different levels, and I'm going to go over the basics of those levels and how you might get to them. So IndieMark level one, is the most basic. You want to make sure that you own your own data and own your own identity. That means you have a personal website. That means that you have a domain name of your own. You can use that website to sign in. And that website has original searchable content. Uh, does anybody here think they have a website that fits those standards? Pretty much everybody has a WordPress site, right? You have your own site. You can sign into it. And you can put your own content on it and in some ways search it. Uh, so that one's pretty easy. So you can check off that you are all the mark level one. Now, uh, one of the nice things about um, WordPress, one of the nice things about being able to manage your own site is, for better or worse, you can do whatever you want with the form and function of your site. Um, I mean, one of the things that was really fun about MySpace was that you could make your own HTML and CSS to change the page up. It might be a little bit harder to read than Facebook, uh, but there's certainly a lot more creativity there. And uh, I know for a lot of people growing up in the era of MySpace becoming popular, um, it, was a, it was an entry to programming. Um, I lied, I actually wanted to, did anyone start learning to program with like MySpace? All right, yes, <laughs> we found somebody. Uh, I've heard a lot of people say other ones like um, Neopets, too, or, uh, uh, sorry? Geos. Geocities. Um, I started doing uh, customizations to, you could do some basic customizations on live journal. That was what I used at the time. Um, but yeah, you know, a lot of people started their web development careers learning how to oops, make beautiful designs uh, like that one on the left. Um, so with WordPress, you can do that. You can decide my site's going to be an e commerce site. You can decide my site's going to be an e commerce site that's a membership site and that it has recurring subscriptions and that. They get a free month's trial or something. You can make different rules with different plugins, extensions, things like that. Um, that's the great thing about being able to own your own site. The limit is whatever you can make it do. 
So now it's going to get slightly more complicated. With IndieMark level two, uh, you need to have the ability to post notes, and uh, there's a lot of acronyms here. Uh, the first one we're going to look at is called POSSE, uh, Publish on Your Own Site and Syndicate Elsewhere. You should also have some sort of H card on your site for contact information. Um, the ability to syndicate to other silos, and the ability to navigate across posts on your site. Uh, so I'll get the easy one. Bottom one is the easiest one out of the way. If you have a WordPress site, you probably have like a next post, previous post, something like that. Basically, the posts can't be separated from one another that you can't, that people cannot navigate your site. Um, the other ones are a little bit more complicated, but not too much. Microformats as a standard has been around since uh, 2004, I believe. Um, so this is just the uh, uh, description on my personal website. It's probably outdated at this point, but um, with a little bit of the markup. So we notice that there is this H card markup here, and then there's some information. Um, this is a note, this is a URL, and this URL is my name. Um, this is the URL for my organization, and then I have some links here that uh, I don't have linked because I want them to be used for authentication purposes which is why I have this rel equals me, um, but I didn't want them to be visible on the site. So I just want to show you a few different ways that you can do this. Uh, so this has the ability where other sites that use microformats or other sites that will read uh, schema on sites, like search engines, will be able to get uh, useful information from my site. Um, if you're using a plugin like Yoast SEO, it's already doing some of this stuff for you behind the scenes. And like I said, there's a lot of acronyms that you can use. Um, the two most popular ones for publishing are Pesos, Publish Elsewhere, and Syndicate to Your Own Site, and Posse. Um, I actually use both. I have a personal site that whenever I you know, tweet something, I'm saving the backup of all my tweets. Um, but I also will publish things to my site and share them elsewhere. And uh, in a little bit, I'll show you what that can look like. And uh, credit goes to uh, other people who are more in the Drupal community will not pronounce the user's name. <laughs> Founder of Drupal. Um, you're going to want. Uh, you're going to be able to publish your content and syndicate elsewhere. Some places make that easier for you than others. I used this uh, article that I published on Medium last year as an example. That Medium, thankfully, uh, gives your site where you originally post the canonical URL, um, and so I can link it back to my site and create a relationship there. That also means that. When people interact with it on Medium, depending on the interaction they do, I can record some of the interaction I might be sending. And recording the interaction will come in IndieMark Level 3. Uh, and in Level 3, you can post replies and send web mentions. Uh, so a web mention is a way to indicate, there are a few different standards for this, um, but basically it's a way to indicate elsewhere that you have done something. Uh, you can publish reply posts, and you can syndicate those reply posts. Um, and I realize that these things are kind of vague, like, oh, I can publish a post in response to something else. So, as an example, um, on Chris Alder's site, he decided that, so I sent a tweet uh, to a couple of other people, he responded to it, and he responded to it as a post on his own website. So he now has a copy of that content, you know, for as long as he uh, feels to hold on to it which means that he has a very long log of all of the conversations he's had online, um, a searchable history that he can use for the future, and one place where you can have ownership of all that content. So I send a tweet, he responds, but he responds via his website, and it shows up for me on Twitter. That's one way to use uh, web mentions and syndication. So this is what it looks like for me. Uh, he started, it's a, basically a tweet that gets to around the 280 character limit, and then it's a link to the site where I can read the rest of the response, if I so want it. Um, now, sure, this should be one way to like write a really long reply to somebody uh, tweeting or something, but the important part here is that he has one place that all of his information comes from. Uh, chances are it's a lot better that I know that he actually sent it, and not just somebody using his Twitter account. Um, and he has the ability to maintain the conversation and control in a way that he can't on Twitter. If Twitter ever goes away, which it will, Facebook will go away one day as well. Uh, they might be the largest platforms now, but 
So were a lot of other companies that we've probably already forgotten the names of at this point, or ones that we missed dearly, like Vine. Um, they will go away, all of your data will go away with it. Uh, I didn't even remember that I still had a MySpace account until they had a breach like two years ago. You know, they sent everybody emails, and they're like, you have a breach, and you're like, that's still a thing. Um, yeah, same as, uh, was it Kathy this morning said that she got a breach yesterday, a uh, notification from Have I Been Pwned? I also don't remember signing up for Eat Street, if anyone got that email yesterday. I don't even know what that site is, but apparently I have an account there. Uh, so level four of any mark is an extension of that. It's just a little bit more uh, complex. You can receive and display comments, similar to what Chris had on his site. Um, you can automate those web mentions. You have multiple response types and you can even use it for things like RSVPs. Um, that's a great way to get out of silos. So, as an example, I don't agree with a lot of things that uh, Eventbrite does as a company. So, I do not RSVP to events that are on Eventbrite. Honestly, I just show up or I don't show up. But there are ways that you can um, use uh, your own site to do RSVPs. If you ever want to attend any indie web events, um, they actually have a system in place for RSVPs. Other sites use it, but they're the most prominent ones I know because you know, they're the standards for it. Uh, so you can get external interactions on your site uh, when you're at this level. So an example here, this is the bottom of the blog post that I wrote. Um, one of the interactions I got was a comment directly on my site. Uh, then some of the other ones are just likes, replies, mentions that I got. So um, in this case, it's just linking back to Twitter accounts. I posted a link to the article on my Twitter account. When somebody interacted with it on Twitter, it automatically sent these responses to my website via web mentions. Um, if somebody were to reply directly to that tweet with a response of their own, it shows up on my website as a new comment. And if I reply to that comment, it will cross post that to Twitter. Um, so if you're ever in any communities on Twitter or Facebook, I think Facebook's more you know, group oriented anyway. Um, your whole community is basically owned by Facebook. Um, I'm not just saying that like as a oh, paranoid thing. <laughs> Communities have lost a lot of data in the past. Some have been shut down. Uh, Facebook will change something like, even if you're in a group and you say, I want to receive these messages, since they are making Facebook extra money, they just push them down even lower. So you might not get updates that you want. And so there's a lot of reasons why that might not be the best place for you to go. But you want to interact there sometimes because you know everyone else is there. Um, so that's a good way that I can still get all of the people, in my case, people who respond to me on Twitter about things that I wrote, and I can still send responses back to them without losing that thread, you know, that gets stale like a day after it was made. Um, and then finally, for IndieMark, uh, this one is not very possible at the moment, um, but it is a standard. Uh, it's everything that's on level four, but it does allow for a CRUD. So for the developers here, creating, reading, updating, and deleting things. Um, the reason that this one's more of a hypothetical right now is pretty much no other social network wants you to be able to you know, update things that you wrote, you know, like that edit button on Twitter that we're never going to get, uh, or delete things from other websites. Uh, so the idea here is if somebody, some of these things do work, for instance, delete. If I uh, were to write a comment on my site, and then delete that comment, assuming I was the one who originally wrote it, um, it can delete that tweet that I sent as one. Uh, but a lot of these other things aren't available. Hopefully they'll be more available if more uh, you know, services decide to integrate. So if you want to get started, uh, I know most of the things that I showed are just like more, you know, oh, here's a thing that you may or may not find interesting. The thing I like about it is that I know that I have the ability to control these conversations a bit better. And I have that ability to ensure that I'm not going to lose something that someone wrote to me and that I wrote back to them uh, because of another site. Um, so if you want to get started, get your own domain and hosting. Again, I think everyone's probably already done that. Um, set up a WordPress site. We're all good here, right? And uh, set up indie off, web mentions, and microphone. All of these things that I'm telling you to do, I'm about to show you plugins that can do them for you because it turns out all of these things, there's been a whole group of people who've done a lot of the hard work for you. You basically just have to install and configure some plugins. Um, if you have other profiles online, link to them 
um, you know, indicate the relationship there. Certain sites will actually allow you to use that for authentication. Um, I tried to find more examples because I know Twitter used to do it, uh, a few other sites used to do it, but the only one I'm still using that does is GitHub. Honestly, if you post on your GitHub profile that uh, you, know, you post a link to our URL to indicate that it's your site, you can use that as an authenticated login. Uh, basically, you can log into your account through your GitHub account or vice versa. Um, and then, where possible, link back to your site using those front wing links. Again, uh, Twitter used to do this. I don't know when or why they dropped it. I was actually a little surprised. Uh, but some networks do still allow you to uh, link back with front So again, you can better verify your uh, ownership and or use them for login. Um, a lot of platforms use OAuth, Facebook, Twitter, Google. You know, so you go to another website and say log in via Google as opposed to creating a login on that site. Um, but what happens if that Google account gets hacked? Uh, that's happened where someone will lose access to a lot of sites and somebody who hacked their email will gain access to a lot of sites. And it's actually really easy to find out where people have accounts if you have access to their Google account. Um, you can avoid some of that if you choose not to use those services to log into other sites. So, you've already done half of that other slide already, just by being here. Um, next, try backfilling your content published elsewhere. Uh, there are ways that you can take content that was written on Facebook or Twitter and put them back onto your own site. Um, try posting to your own site first and publishing elsewhere. Uh, again, with some of these tools I'm about to show you, you can just write a blog post, and then once you hit publish, automatically have it send out to other networks. Um, provide for replies via web mention and then set up Micropub to manage your content. Uh, Micropub, I realized I didn't that earlier, um, is one of those authentication standards that you can use to prove that you have the ability to post things to a site, and so you can use another service. Um, for those using Mac, the Bear Writer has the ability to do that. You can write content directly in that editor and have it post to your site. Uh, I, IA Writer does. I'm trying to think of a few others. A lot, a lot of um, dedicated writing apps now have this ability to log in directly to your site through an authentication token and uh, publish content there. There's also ones that are made specifically for reading that content. You know, back in the day, everyone read everything via RSS before we all just did like scrolls on uh, news feeds. That is still alive and well. Um, there might not be a Google Reader anymore, but there's a lot of other tools out there. There's a plugin on WordPress.org called IndieWeb. Um, it's a wrapper plugin, kind of like Jetpack, um, in the same way that you can activate and deactivate certain other plugins with it. Um, and just like Jetpack, you might not need all of those other plugins, so pick and choose the ones that make sense based on your site. Um, but this is a really easy way to get started with those things I mentioned, um, because it has a lot of them sorted, organized with descriptions on what they do and how they work. Um, including the ability to set up Micropub, web mentions, uh, semantic linkbacks, syndication, some things I haven't even gone to because there's so many other things I can do with it. Um, an automatic developer, uh, Bo Levins, created something called Keyring, uh, which is a plugin that makes it easier for you to use. Um, I think he has OAuth, OAuth 2, and, and one or two other standards in there. Basically, there's a few integrations already built in, about a dozen, and you can create your own integrations to log into other websites and backfill your data from there. Uh, so I used this in the past to um, grab my, my uh, Fitbit data and save copies of it, although I don't worry about those anymore. Or uh, get all my old Twitter comments and uh, bring them into my site. Um, if you want to add your own data. I have a personal website. It's not if you have the URL you just see like a splash page. Uh, but all of the content that I create online, as much of it as I can, I put there. So I have my own searchable database of things from the past. It's very, honestly, very helpful for me. Um, and this makes it really easy without you having to write those integrations yourself all the time. Uh, so with that, I think that was good timing for that. Um, I realize I went over like, a lot of stuff here. Any, any other questions? Or any fighting about platform questions?
anyone here gonna try this on their site? <laughs> Sorry, I think you just said this, but could you repeat which of the plugins you would share is the one that lets you get that engage, like the multi-channel engagement thing at the bottom of the post? Yeah, uh, that would be through any web there is. Or, so this one is uh, this plugin like has a lot of other plugins built into it. Um, the uh, web mentions plugin, um, and then you probably would also want to use the syndication plugin uh, so that you can send responses back to those other services. Uh, the standards that they're built on are, um, you, you can integrate those directly into the sites yourself, uh, but most of those plugins are fairly uh, inobtrusive, unobtrusive. Um, if you have custom, I will say, because I ran this for myself, if you have uh, a custom comment walker class on your theme, like mine does, uh, then you might have issues with the semantic, uh, the syndications plugin. Um, it might style it a little weird. I had to fix that. But otherwise, everything else actually works really smoothly without me having to do much of anything. You know, you just kind of like set it up and just start using it. Um, either not making that distinction, 
If I post something to my Twitter account, it does cross post to my Mastodon account and vice versa. Um, usually, if you, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll see something that says something at some other URL and you know that I just cross post it from Mastodon. Um, if you want to make that decision, you have better ability to do so if you're controlling it. So I'm going to use Mastodon as an, um, as an example. You have the ability to control who it's published to, um, whether that is everybody, everybody on your specific instance, so if you have a community instance, um, replies similar to Twitter as if, you know, let's say that, uh, that you're following me and you're following Frank, and Frank and I talk to each other, then you'll be able to see it, uh, but only if you're following both of us, um, or direct mentions. So you have, a, you have that extra level of choosing um, versus everything having to be local or global. Uh, so, if, like, if you have a Twitter account now, your two options are everything's public or everything is locked in. Uh, with your own services, you can choose where things will go. As far as different personalities, for some of those different uh, identities online, um, if you sign up for multiple accounts with different services, you can choose not to cross post them. Like, I did the extra effort to make sure that they Thank you very much.